Uh, hi, uh, in this recording I want to look at a uh, fairly recent theory that suggests that the, the site of the temple was lost, that the Temple Mount as it has been known for the past many many years uh, is actually not the site of the temple but that the temple was located somewhere else. And I'm asking the question, was the site of the temple really lost? Is the Temple Mount really something else than what it, it seems to be? And I want to look at the claims of Bob Kanuki and Dr. Martin Young in light of the scriptures and in light of some archaeological evidence. Now this will just be a very quick overview just to introduce you to the topic. I have received some of these resources from Pastor Derek Walker uh, in the UK, so if you want more information, check out his teachings. So let's uh, go into it. Now, in 1867, the city of David was discovered. Uh, it was a, uh, an area that was not known to archaeologists. It was assumed that, uh, that David's kingdom and the, the city of Jerusalem was contained within the, the walls of the old city. But what was discovered to the amazement of archaeologists was that the city of David was located to the south of what is today known as the old city, outside of the walls that have been erected since. So this might have formed a background for a theory that Dr. Martin Young came up with, which Bob Kanuki has promoted in his recent teaching materials. Now, this theory says that the temple needed water, and the only water, so water source in Jerusalem is the Gihon Spring. And that is in the city of David. And so if the temple is located up at the Mount, Mount Moriah or up at the, the Temple Mount, then it is out of reach of the waters of the Gihon Spring. In addition, uh, Dr. Martin Young points out that Jesus said that not one stone will be left upon another. And he raises the question that, well, how does this fit uh, the current Temple Mount with its massive stones that are left in the Western Wall? Is this a con contradiction of what Jesus said? Does it actually fit his prophecy? So Dr. Martin Young's conclusion is no, it doesn't fit the prophecy, and so the temple must have been located elsewhere. And he says the temple must have been in the city of David. And that the modern day Temple Mount is actually the Roman fortress of Antonia. Now let's have a look at what the Bible says uh, about the location of the temple. We'll read from Second Chronicles chapter 3. And it says there that Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David at the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Now let's notice here firstly that the house of the Lord was built on Mount Moriah. And as you can see on the map on your right, the area marked as in a red color is the ancient city of David, and it is far from being a mount. It is a bit low-lying compared to the areas around it. So that in itself uh, raises the question that how could Mount Moriah be located in an area that is lower than the surrounding region? We read in the Psalms that mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. And we can see how this fits the city of David. But the city of David does not fit the Mount Moriah concept. Let's go on. Biblical evidence number two, Abraham. Now Abraham sacrificed his, uh, his, or was about to sacrifice his son Isaac on Mount Moriah. This was the mountain God showed him where he was to take his son and slay him. Th thankfully, uh, the sacrifice was stopped at the last moment. But Mount Moriah uh, was, was in the scripture a, a hilltop. And... Um, if Bob Kanuki and Dr. Martin Young's theory was correct, then it would have been inside the ancient city of Salem, which, was, which had Melchizedek as the priest at the time. Now, we know that Abraham did not go into a city to sacrifice Isaac. He went up outside uh, to this hilltop. And so this too does not fit the, uh, the theory that the Temple Mount was in the city of David because it was a city at the time of Abraham, and then the sacrifice of Isaac must have happened inside a city. So it, it just doesn't fit 
uh, the scriptural record. Let's look further. Uh, biblical evidence number three, the threshing floor. The scripture is very clear that the temple was built on a threshing floor. And that is a place where the, the, the wheat is taken after harvest and it is threshed by the oxen and it's thrown up in the air so that the chaff can be blown away. This is done outside of cities because the chaff would blow everywhere. And they'd also want it to be at a place with a bit of a, a gentle breeze to take the chaff away. And so the threshing floor would not be located inside a city or inside a city of David. It would be located outside and preferably on higher ground. And this fits the Temple Mount location to the north of the ancient city of David being on slightly higher ground just outside the city and a place where the gentle wind could carry away the, the chaff and leaving behind just the precious grain from the harvest. So Solomon's temple was built on a threshing floor and they do not happen inside cities. Biblical evidence number four. We read when a temple was dedicated by Solomon in Second Chronicles chapter 5 verse 2 that they brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord up from the city of David, which is Zion, or out of the city of David, which is Zion. So, if they brought the Ark out of the city of David, then they must have brought it to the temple outside the city of David. So the temple was not in the city of David, it was outside the city of David. Now, we know there is a counter-argument that says, well, the... Um, uh, the, the temple is described as being in Zion, but we know also that uh, although Zion was used to describe the city of David at this time, later it became used for the, the, the whole Jerusalem as Jerusalem grew. And so as Mount Moriah was the site of the temple, that too became known as Zion. And that doesn't contradict what the Bible says, that the ark was to be brought up from the city of David, up from what was known as Zion at that time, and later, the whole area became known as Zion. So in summary, uh, the biblical evidence is that Mount Moriah is a hill or mountain, and the city of David is not. Abraham's sacrifice was on Mount Moriah, uh, and that was not in the heart of a city. The threshing floor was outside the city, and the Bible states the temple was outside the city of David. So this whole theory and idea that the temple was located inside the city of David simply does not fit the biblical account. Let's also have a look very briefly at archaeology. Now, of course, at this point, archaeologists can't dig under the Temple Mount. They can't touch it or go anywhere near it due to the sensitivity of the site. However, there are pieces of evidence that are very useful to us. And one of those most compelling pieces is the Stone of Trumpeting. This stone that you see in front of you was found thrown down from what is called the Temple Mount Plaza onto the pavement of the stones below by the Romans when they destroyed the temple. And on this stone you can see an inscription in Hebrew which says, To the place of trumpeting. Now the trumpets and the shofars will be sounded in the temple at a high spot, the pinnacle of the temple. Now, it's very hard to imagine an inscription like this being in the heart of a Roman fortress. If the Temple Mount was a Roman fortress, what was this stone doing on the Temple Mount? So this points us to the Temple Mount being the location of which the shofars of the Temple were blown to, to announce the Sabbath, announce the new moons, announce the festivals. Archaeological evidence number two. Yes, Jesus did predict that not one stone will be left upon another. But let's look at the context. It says that the disciples of Jesus, Jesus showed him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus replied that not one stone will be left upon another. And it is true that the buildings were destroyed. Now, yes, uh, Bob Kanuki's theory that the whole Temple Mount was destroyed, there's nothing left of it, can fit this Bible verse. But, on the other hand, the, the current western wall of the Temple Mount Plaza does not contradict these words of Jesus. In fact, it was just a retaining wall holding up the ground and the soil for this massive plaza where the temple stood that could hold over two million worshippers at once. 
So I don't believe this is a contradiction of the words of Jesus, the fact that the Western Wall is standing today. Evidence number three, uh, a central part of the theory that the Temple Mount was not uh, the place of the Temple is the, the spring of Gihon, which is Jerusalem's only water source. And uh, the theory says that this water source would have been used for the Temple. Now you have to remember that there would be literally hundreds and sometimes thousands and tens of thousands of sacrifices happening on the Temple every day. And you wouldn't want the, all that blood and guts to be pollu polluting the major waterway of the city. So how did they get water to the Temple Mount? Well, uh, the, the Jewish sources tell us that there was a series of, of aqueducts in place bringing water to Jerusalem, bringing water specifically to the Temple Mount. So in summary, uh, the Stone of Trumpeting really shows that the Temple Mount was not a Roman fortress. And yes, the words of Jesus that uh, not one stone were left upon another uh, concerns the buildings of the Temple, not necessarily the retaining wall and the western wall today. And regarding the water source, the Temple, according to ancient Jewish records, had a different water source. So I believe the case is very strong. Uh, against this theory of Dr. Martin Young and Bob Kanuki. Finally, uh, we'd like to touch on what I call X marks the spot. God says in Second Chronicles 7 that he had chosen and sanctified this place, that his name would be there forever, that his eyes and his heart would be there, be there perpetually. And I believe that scripture still stands. I believe it is a place chosen by God. And I believe this is the very reason that there is such tremendous tension over this site today. The very fact that there is such tension over this site, to me, is evidence that there is something more to this site than it being an ancient Roman garrison. I believe there is a spiritual conflict here that shows there is a, a battle in the heavenlies between the, the God of Islam and the God of the Bible, between those who, who follow the one true God and those who are trying to take it over. Inside the Dome of the Rock there is an inscription saying that Allah has no son and that Muhammad is his, is his messenger. And I believe this is a sign of the conflict that is happening on the Temple Mount between the God of Islam and the God of the Bible. And ultimately, we, I believe that the God of the Bible will, will succeed, he will win, this place will be conquered and God's name will be glorified in this area once again. So we have a role, I believe, uh, not just to, to sit on the sidelines and watch. And I, I, I believe that we have a role to, to play in prayer, to pray for God's will to be done in this place. Uh, and uh, God has a purpose that he wants to dwell among his people. And a day is coming when he will return and he will dwell among Jew and Gentile. And so as we see the tensions build up around the Temple Mount, let us lift up our eyes and remember that He indeed is coming soon. The Messiah is coming. So may God bless you and uh, thank you for listening to this, this recording. And if you'd like more information about the temple, about the issues surrounding it, about Bible prophecy in general, come along to my website at pastorenoch.com.au or subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you.